The Hyundai Creta is many things. It's comfortable, it's refined, it's feature-packed and what not. What it isn't is sporty. This Creta N-Line is here to change things. Before anything else, it needs to look the part. And it does. The attractive 18-inch rims that come in place of the standard model 17 inches single-handedly enhance the Creta N-Line stance and then there are other details that add up. Up front, there's a sportier bumper above which sits a new grille. It's smaller, gets a different mesh and is also home to a lower set Hyundai logo. No changes to lighting though that includes full width DRLs up top and the main headlights that sit lower down. N-Line typical red accents line the base of the bumpers and side skirts and the red finish to the brake calipers is a sporty touch. At the back, the roof-mounted rear spoiler, the diffuser-like look to the rear bumper and twin-tip exhausts also establish the Greta N-Line as something special. What's a pity is that the exhaust merely looks different but doesn't sound it. The Creta N-Line is available in three solid paint options including a sexy new matte grey and there are also three dual tone options including this thunder blue with black. Notably, you won't find any chrome details here and even the C-pillar is finished in black rather than silver as on the standard Creta. What do you think of the new Creta N-Line and would it be your pick of the sporty mid-sized SUVs? Let us know in the comment section below and if you haven't already, please do subscribe to the Autocar India channel and hit that bell icon to be notified every time we have a new video up. Inside too, the N-Line feels different to other Cretas. The Creta N-Line's interior has a different, more sporty vibe and that's all courtesy this all-black look this interior gets. Adding colour to this interior are these red highlights around the touchscreens. You also get this dash of red on the dashboard. There's red stitching on the steering wheel as well as on the gear lever. Now talking of these elements, this is an N-Line specific steering wheel. So it's chunky, it's really nice to hold and DCT versions also get these very feelsome paddle shifters. The gear selector as well is different on the DCT version and that's not all. There's a manual version as well with a proper three pedal setup and a very nice looking gear lever of its own. Hyundai could have also gone a step further by giving the N-Line sportier seats. These are basically the same seats that you get on the Creta but with sportier upholstery. A metal finish to the pedals and red ambient lighting complete the look. But as sporty as the cabin looks, it doesn't wow you for quality. A lot of the plastics look and feel hard. And you also see a lot of these panel gaps in clear view. Where the Creta N-Line feels like any other Creta is in its feature set, which means it goes all out to pamper you. Here are some of the highlights. You get a 10.25 inch touchscreen that's really slick to use. There's connected tech, there's Android Auto and Apple CarPlay, though sadly they're still wired and not wireless. You get 10.25 inch digital dials that are again very nicely laid out and easy to refer to. The front seats are ventilated, the driver's seat is powered, you get an electric parking brake, uh, there's a wireless charging pad, there's dual zone climate control, a Bose sound system and perhaps headlining the list of features is this panoramic sunroof. The Creta N-Line is offered in two trims and it's the top spec N10 that's comparable to a standard SXO that Hyundai expects will bring in the bulk of sales. Lower N8 versions make do with a smaller 8-inch touchscreen, miss out on power driver's seat, front seat ventilation, a Bose sound system and 360-degree camera. Unique to the N8, however, is a dual-cam dash camera. In terms of safety, all Creta N-Lines get six airbags, ABS, ESC, Hill Start Assist, tyre pressure monitors and Isofix child seat mounts as standard. Radar and camera-based ADAS functions, however, are exclusive to the N10s. ADAS functions include collision warning, auto braking, blind spot detection, lane keep assist, high beam assist and more. Now you'd expect the shift to all black upholstery to impact the feeling of space that you get particularly on the back seat, but that's not an issue. And that's helped by these large windows and of course this panoramic sunroof that allows a lot of light to enter the cabin. Now as for comfort, no different to the standard Creta, you get a lot of room, front seat set to my driving position, I'm just under 6 feet tall. More than adequate space, I'm pretty well catered to on headroom as well and a third passenger will be comfortable. But Annoyingly, no center headrest. Now talking of amenities at the back, you get these pillows for the rear headrest, this time embroidered 
with N line logo. You also get an adjustable center armrest that's positioned at a good height. The windows get sun blinds, which are really handy on a hot day. And you also get two USB type C charging ports. The rear seat backrest angle is also adjustable, and in general, the rear seat experience is really good. There's no change in luggage capacity. Boot space is 433 liters and there's enough room to store suitcases. When needed, the rear seat backrest can also be folded to make more space. Now coming to the heart of the matter. The N-Line is solely offered with the 1.5 litre turbo petrol engine as available on the standard Creta and power and torque remain unchanged too at 160 horsepower and 253 newton meters. The 7-speed dual clutch transmission sees no change either, but exclusive to the N-Line is a manual gearbox version. The Creta N-Line manual will be the version of interest to ardent petrol heads to whom a driver's car must have a three-pedal setup and a manual gearbox. Now, the manual gearbox in question is a six-speed unit. Is it the slickest shifting manual gearbox around? No. Gear shifts do require some effort. The clutch too is a bit on the springy side, but you'll still have fun slamming in a quick shift. Gearing is very tall though. For instance, third gear will get you from 20 kph all the way up to 140. You'll have to be mindful of the gear you're in at lower speeds, but there on the engine's ready power means you won't need to keep busy with the gearbox. Now, when you're starting out, it's not the most alert of engines. You have to wait till about 1700, 1800 RPM or so before there's a step up in power. Beyond that, there's no surge of power as you get in the VW units, 1.5 TSI's for instance, but you get this constant stream of power, which means you'll often be going faster than you think you are. It's deceptively quick. We couldn't test the Creta N-Line manual, but the 0 to 100 kph time should be around 9 seconds. The engine also sounds pleasant enough, but yeah, Hyundai should have done something for the soundtrack of the N-Line. Hyundai has tweaked the steering tuning and suspension damping for the N-Line and the switch to 18-inch rims should also help dynamics. The good news is that the Creta N-Line feels more involving, more confident and more fun than a regular Creta. But... I'd describe the handling as pleasant, but it's not as engaging as I hoped it would be. Sure, there is more weight at the steering and turn-in is a bit livelier, but the transformation that we witnessed from I-20 to I-20 N-Line, you don't get that here. Don't get me wrong, because Hyundai has added masala to the drive experience without compromising on comfort, and that's a bargain buyers will be happy with. In terms of ride comfort, the Creta N-Line feels a bit more reactive to surface imperfections like uh, expansion joints and the like. But I think that's more down to the upsize tyres than how much firmer the suspension has been set up. On our drive route on the completed section of the Delhi-Mumbai Expressway, there were other points of note too. In other aspects, the Greta impresses. Straight line stability is good. You can hold triple digit speeds with comfort and ease. And there's also the safety net of ADAS functions. Really helpful on a wide open expressway like this. Functions like lane keep assist and auto emergency braking are truly worth spending extra money for. You do tend to lose focus on a road like this that tends to go on and on. So these features do really count for a lot. Time to switch end lines. If you're spending so much money on your car, chances are that you want the convenience of an automatic transmission. And the Creta N-Line offers you that with the option of a DCT. Now, this is a 7-speed DCT. We've experienced the 7-speed DCT and 1.5-litre turbo combination before on the standard Creta as well. And in that sense, it doesn't feel any different to its everyday version. But that's no bad thing because the gearbox is well in tune with the engine's characteristics when you want to drive with a bit more enthusiasm, both engine and gearbox respond and make the drive quite exciting. And when you want a bit more in terms of driver engagement, you have options. You can change gears via the gear shifter or you can also use these very nice to use 
paddle shifters on the steering wheel. Also exclusive to the DCT version of the Creta N-Line are drive and traction modes, which adds in a bit more flexibility, allowing you to fine tune your driving experience to your liking. Set the drive mode to sport and what you'll get is a Vatia steering and a slightly more responsive engine and gearbox. In fact, the DCT's Vatia steering in sport feels more feelsome than the one on the manual that has one default setting. Also exclusive to the Creta N-Line DCT is the added ADAS functionality of adaptive cruise control. The system maintains a set distance to a vehicle ahead while out cruising and also has the ability to bring the car to a complete halt and get moving again in traffic. Convenience of an automatic transmission aside, the drive modes and added ADAS functionality make the DCT the N-Line to go for. Prices for the Creta N-Line manual start at 16.82 lakh rupees for the N8, while the N10 comes in at 18.32 lakh rupees ex showroom. The N8 DCT is yours for 19.34 lakh, while the N10 DCT tops off at 20.3 lakh rupees. The prices are a reasonable 30,000 rupees more than comparable versions of the standard Creta and at par with rivals such as the Kia Seltos DCT in X-Line form, the Škoda Kushak Monte Carlo and Volkswagen Tiguan GT. We'll have to bring the Creta N-Line and rivals together to find the most entertaining mid-sized SUV. But what the Creta N-Line does is add some flavour to an already well-rounded package. It's nicer to drive, though it would seem Hyundai has held back on upgrades to keep the core Creta buyer happy. For many, it's the different look that'll be the lead reason to go for an N-Line. After all, 30,000 rupees extra is a small price to pay to distinguish your Creta from the 80,000 facelifted Cretas that have been booked already.